Hello everyone, I'm Geek Freak and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be reacting to Optimus Prime vs Gundam. Transformers vs Gundam Death Battle. So if you, if you guys haven't seen this video, go and watch that video first. Then I'll come back and watch it. So let's, let's continue. Okay, um... Okay, I'm, I'm a little... Okay, I'm a fan of the Gundam Wing series. I'm, I haven't, like, actually, um... I think, uh... uh th this Gundam's from the original series, which I haven't seen. I, sh I should get to that. Um... My least favourite of of the series is probably Gundam Seed and um, what's what's the, what's the other one called Gu Gundam Double Zero or something. I I I, I, didn't, I didn't didn't like those two. I didn't, didn't like those two series. I mean, I I prefer the um, the, the old ones myself. Uh, but um, saying that, what well, I mean, what, what, what can you do? Um, let me, let me think. Who do I think is going to win out of this one? Um, the last time we we had a fight, it was like the Power Rangers versus um. Oh, what, was his, what was his name? Uh, it was it was a Gundam versus like the Power Rangers. So this so you know it's it's gonna be um, a Gundam versus Optimus Prime. So, so you got somebody actually controlling something, and it's the actual robot fighting itself. So yeah, that's that's different. <laughs> so um, who do I think is gonna win? I'm gonna go with Optimus Prime on this one simply because. You know, I mean, he's, he's a Decepticon. He, he he can like you know kick. He can um you know put up a, a pretty damn good fight. And the and, I mean, it's a guy c controlling the the mech. It's, I mean, oh no, so no sorry, beg, beg your pardon. It's, it's, he's not a Decepticon. He's a um Autobot. Sorry, <laughs> I do a bit do a bit of a problem with that. So um yeah, I'm gonna go with um Oct Octopus Prime with it. No, oh. yeah, I'm gonna go with Octopus Prime on this one. So uh, yeah, with all I said done, let's get to watching. So so this is Optimus Prime vs Gundam, Transformers vs Gundam, Death Ball, and 3, 2, 1, and... Go! Check out 23andMe, a DNA testing service that can offer insight into your ancestry, health, wellness, and traits. The 23andMe Health and Ancestry Service includes reports on how your DNA can influence your weight, sleep quality, sense of taste, and more. It's super easy to do. You just spit into the tube and mail it back to their lab to be analyzed. I learned a lot about my family tree and that I'm probably a little lactose intolerant. <laughs> Order your 23andMe Health and Ancestry Service Kit at 23andMe.com slash death battle. That's the number 23andMe.com slash death battle. Okay, awesome. Across this vast world of different nations with different yeah. people, it is the clash of opinions which truly divides okay. us. However, there is one universal truth which absolutely everyone yeah. can agree on. Giant robots are yep. freaking awesome! Like Optimus Prime, the original yeah, G1 yeah. Transformer. And the RX-78-2, the original mobile Ooh. suit Gundam. These aren't just any robots, they're the old school oh, yeah. classics. The first of their kind, and we're in for that, a robo battle awesome. of East versus West. Well, Optimus was originally a Japanese <laughs> He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Awesome. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a oh, death so battle. To, damn. Millions of years was ago, was on a distant planet Gundam, called Cybertron, first. a great unrest grew between two factions of robotic beings, the Decepticons and the okay. Autobots. With little warning, they found themselves entangled in civil huh. war. Led by that douchebag Megatron, the Decepticons started gunning down any bot they pleased for basically no reason, including some guy named Orion Pax, which will be important later. Okay. Rest in peace, Robro. What Megatron didn't know was that this seemingly random encounter would end up reshaping the okay. universe. Thanks to a robot Gandalf, Orion Pax was rebuilt into something yeah. bigger, stronger, and way more recognizable. The newest commander of the Autobots had risen, Optimus Prime. The Autobots will never sacrifice <laughs> them. Optimus is a powerful warrior with tons of awesome Robo yeah. powers. As a Transformer, he can scan Listen, nearby objects and morph his body to resemble one, becoming a robot in disguise. 
His favorite is a classic 1979 Kenworth K100 tractor. An oldie but a goodie which sports 500 horsepower and can book it over 80 miles per hour. He even gets a trailer which, when he doesn't need it, mysteriously disappears into thin air. No, really, where the hell does that thing go? I need to know. Right. More importantly, the life force of every Transformer resides in their spark, sort of like a soul. And Optimus is no different, except that his spark gives him a few unique okay, go, abilities. Go yeah, his spark's pretty rare. Compared to other Robo people, it gives him increased strength, speed, and okay, durability. Cool. He can shoot laser beams from his hands, fly with either a jetpack or his feet boosters, and move his limbs around while they're detached like some sort of ghost robot <laughs> Rayman. Ooh! Optimus is referred to as a 0.1 percenter. That is how rare a being of his caliber oh. is. Is that what all those people on Wall Street were protesting? Even then, many of Optimus' abilities are further enhanced thanks to his possession of one of the most powerful artifacts in Cybertron's yeah. history. The Matrix of huh. Leadership. Oh uh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's nothing much, it's just a piece of robot god! <laughs> the Matrix is a conduit for the power of Primus, the creator of the Transformer race. With this, Optimus can heal some of his most yeah, grievous well, wounds. Yeah, uh, Optimus Primus goes But on. not all the time. Like, you know, when he died. And use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Well, he has an impressive arsenal to hopefully keep that particular problem from coming up again. <laughs> yeah, never <laughs> again. Regardless, he wields the Ion Blaster, a giant death cannon which prime one hands like a boss. This big ol' rifle fires bolts of energy strong enough to take down most Decepticons, and can even be fired into space from ground level. Even better, it never seems to run out of ammo. Ah, one can only dream. Optimus Prime also carries numerous weapons composed of Energon, Energon. a raw energy force used by Transformers to power their technology and, well, <laughs> themselves. He's got a glowy Energon axe and Energon swords, perfect for slicing up robots of Damn. all sizes. And I guess they probably work pretty good on people, too. Fighting fire with fire, fire Optimus Prime led the fight against the Decepticons for several millennia. Eventually, the war even found its way to our own Earth. But we've got nothing to worry about with Optimus protecting the planet. He's tanked blasts that would tear other bots apart, like when this mega refinery exploded. It could be seen from outer space. Damn. He's punched the ground so hard, Damn. the trees around him freaking exploded. Child's play, Boomstick. He's strong enough to tip this large oil tanker, which, when compared to the real-life Seawise giant, giant, must weigh over 700,000 tons. He's tossed a satellite into orbit and punched hard enough to crack Six Shot's chest plate. Who boasted that his armor was drawn from the compacted subatomic matter of a collapsed Damn. star. Just to let you know, such a star would have a density of over 300 billion tons per cubic inch. While great density doesn't necessarily beget great toughness, yeah. this Optimus still Prime means Six Shot's armor was 500 billion times more dense than Osmium, awesome. the most dense natural material on Earth. You're the most dense natural material on Earth. <laughs> What'd you say? And our Robo Commander wrecked it. He's fast enough to catch up to this Decepticon space shuttle in just 23 seconds. Given the size of the Earth here and the angle of ascent, we can determine he's moving around 125,000 miles per wow. hour. He's also a talented leader, capable of commanding a thousand battles at the same time via what? the Omniglobe. Like Skynet, but in a giant disco ball. <laughs> He's used that crazy strength of his to punch through Megatron, who once tanked an explosion big enough to knock Cybertron out of orbit. And thanks to the weird robo-magic of the Matrix, he's even defeated Unicorn. Okay. Unicron. Who's basically a giant robot Satan who eats Damn. planets. This guy is unstoppable. Not necessarily. Optimus is certainly powerful, but after all is said and done, he has one awesome. major weakness. To violate that law would destroy our honor. He's just too nice. Yeah, he's kinda all about the whole honor and fair fighting thing, which kinda screwed him over yep. more than once, and even gotten him killed multiple yep. times. Plus, he killed himself once just because he accidentally broke the rules in a freaking game. Damn. Yeah. But when his back is to the wall and all hell's breaking loose, he'll fight to the end, riding the eye of the storm. Battle. One shall stand, one shall fall. Okay, here we go. Here we go. 
In the year 2179, 21. humanity has embraced the stars. Well, mostly. Right. After a somewhat united humanity expanded across the yeah. solar system, the ideologies between those on Earth and those in space began to drift yeah. apart. A new space-noid republic, the Principality of Xeon, arose to challenge the Earth Federation. Okay. Space noid? That like the Domino's pizza <laughs> mascot, but in space? No, more like space Nazis. Ah. Yeah, that space is pretty good. Oh, well, I guess it's no surprise that they started a war by gassing a populated space oh, colony and dropping the whole thing on the planet. Man, that's messed Damn. up. But that's just how it started. For the real star of the show, some smart guys put their heads together and came up with the coolest thing yeah. they could think of. Giant fighting robots! That's These odd. were mobile suits, and one of Earth's nuttier engineers had developed a suit which would put all others oh, cool. to shame. This was the RX-78-2, otherwise known as Gundam. the Gundam. Like I there have been lots of mobile suits named Gundam, yeah. but this was the original granddaddy okay. of them all. This experimental mobile suit was hidden on a remote colony, but before its maiden voyage with the equally classified white base could begin, it was caught in a surprise Xeon attack. With just two Zaku suits, the Space Nazis wiped out almost all of the White Base's military crew. Okay, cool. The only people left to save these secret projects were civilians, who had no idea these things even existed. <laughs> Among those who rose up was a young boy named Amuro Ray. Brilliant, albeit standoffish, Amuro was actually the son of the Gundam's Train. chief engineer. Oh, thank God. And had already stumbled upon the mech's coded blueprints. He's, he's so he kid. grabbed the owner's manual, jumped in the Gundam, and flew into the fight. Damn, not too shabby for going off just the Rank manual. Huh. Amuro quickly adapted to its complex controls thanks to its learning computer system, designed so the Gundam itself Same can complex. learn its pilot's limitations and compensate. Its body is made of a super durable yeah. Luna Optimus titanium Plankers. alloy I mean, called Gundarium. Of course. Yet another fictional metal that's way better than anything in real life. Yep. For weapons, it's got twin 60mm Vulcan guns for okay. ears. It's got a shield that can block shots strong enough to take down warships. And a gravity hammer, a supersized flail that's rocket propelled. It's so cool. Whoever came up with that is my goddamn <laughs> hero. Same with the guy who built the ultra-destructive beam rifle. That would be the ingenious Dr. Minofsky. Thanks to him, the beam rifle is a marvelous feat of weapons engineering. Minofsky had developed a way to miniaturize the enormous megaparticle cannons found on warships without losing okay. any power. The result is a Gundam-sized rifle that can take down entire fleets of ships all on its own. It's like having a pistol with all the power of a thousand tanks. A single shot could easily tear through a 13,000-ton Musai-class warship. Given the official stats of this ship, to tear it asunder like so would require a strike worth nearly 9,000 tons of TNT. Sure, the beam rifle only has 16 shots, but who really cares when you just need one? Last but not least, the Gundam carries two retractable beam yep. sabers. Cause you can't have space battles without royalty-free yep. lightsabers. <laughs> but all these amazing Fuck weapons would be useless without an exceptional pilot. Despite still technically being a civilian, Amuro became the main pilot for the Gundam. Turns out, his skill was mostly thanks to his previously unknown abilities. Yeah. Amuro was a new type. Oh, like, uh, Pokemon? <laughs> See, apparently humankind was never meant to live under gravity's yeah. pull. In space, without it literally weighing down their yeah. souls, some humans developed psychic ah. powers. That is the dumbest backstory for why someone gets powers. And we've heard a lot of them, Wiz. So what, he can like read minds or something? Sort of. These powers so and their capabilities have mental, little definition, often deferring curse. between different people. Most new types can instantly understand each other upon contact, even drawing kinship between sworn huh. enemies. Amro's abilities in particular grant him something akin to precognition. He can predict exactly what will happen on the battlefield and where his enemies will be, oh, crap. and can capitalize on it if he reacts fast enough. How could he possibly predict I'd attack from the other side? He shot down targets too fast for the eye to see, and navigated his friends through a collapsing fortress with no casualties. By the end of the war, his own reflexes uh, you know were what? pushing the limits of the Gundam itself. A magnetic coating was added to the Gundam to compensate, reducing the suit's friction and increasing its speed by 27%. Oh, yeah, it's right, oh, yeah, it's right over, <laughs> over 
over 14 years of military service, Amuro became a legendary pilot. He even learned how to use these super fast funnel guns with his psycho was of powers. Speaking of speed, the Gundam is yeah. comparable to the Red Zaku piloted by Amuro's rival, Char. Char, which is three times faster than the standard Damn. green model. During the first large-scale battle with yeah. mobile suits, a Zaku flew through the battlefield in seven Damn. seconds. By comparing the 1,072-foot-long Magellan-class starships yeah. in the distance, we can tell the Zaku flew over seven miles. This puts the standard Zaku's top speed just under Mach 5. When tripled to compare to Char, this means the Gundam can move at least 11,000 miles per hour, 15 times the speed of sound. Highballing it with Amuro's new type powers and magnetic coating, I, I, I it's possible the Gundam can move as fast as Mach 25, against, um, though anything over that would put it dangerously close to re-entry speeds, which its chassis cannot survive on its own. The Gundam is strong enough to lift and throw this goofy yeah. mobile suit, and tough enough to power through a magnetic field that's 7,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It survived plenty of really big explosions, including a detonating asteroid and a nuclear blast which wrecked Amuro's home colony. I I bet it could wipe out the space Nazis all on its own. <laughs> it nearly did. Amuro and his Gundam were instrumental to the war effort. It doesn't matter how much the Gundam was burned, it would always stand up, dispel the fear, and fly. The I think. I think. I think. The I think that's the game I played. Die! I think that's the game I used to play when I was younger. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate what, once and what, for all. What, what, what but first, let me transform game, your eating so, habits. So oh, criminy. By now, you've probably heard of Blue yeah, Apron, like so the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. But did you know about all the different kinds of delicious foods you can make? Like the honey chipotle glazed chicken with poblano and lime rice. There's plenty to choose from, since they offer 12 okay, new recipes get... each week. All you have to do is choose the two, three, or four that sounds best to you, fun. and they deliver it right to your door. Yeah, well, that's gonna be a pain in the ass for me to do it. Plus, it's super simple to cook. It's got easy-to-follow instructions and perfectly proportioned okay, so. ingredients. They're non-GMO, okay, so and the meat under, has no um, added hormones. Under, My under, favorite part under, is under, feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. Yeah. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. So check out this week's six, menu and get your first minutes, three meals free at blueapron.com slash battle. Six, That's blueapron.com slash battle to get your first three meals seconds. free. But right Left. now, it's time for a death battle! Okay, here we go. Six minutes and 30 seconds. Here we go. Prime. Come on. Amuro, come in. Where are you? I'm checking something out, Sailor. It's more than meets the eye. Get your back <laughs> I get to my face. If there's trouble, we can't send back up. <laughs> it's What's more than meets the eye. That's funny. Oh crap. Oh, it's an animal. I told you. I told you. <laughs> this is that looks so freaking badass. It's too fast. It's too fun. Oh no shit, you took it's it's a sentient being. There you are. Oh. Damn the, 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 the songs back then were so freaking cool. Decepticon, I have been in battle for countless eons. He doesn't stand a chance. He doesn't stand a chance. The Gundam doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> oh crap. Not today. Ooh. I should have I should have killed them. Oh, I hate gravity. Oh shit, Sherlock. Okay, here we go. Oh crap. Oh, come on. 
Chance, it just turns on a chance. Oh crap. Gundam, no! What? What can you do? No. <gasps> oh crap. Prime, no! I'm just pissed. I must stand, so you shall fall. Holy shit, that was awesome. Oh crap, basket, that was awesome. Prime, I is the prime. That was awesome. Actually, actually can, you, can you imagine if someone... He's got the touch! He's got the power! I, I think that was awesome. The Gundam was an impressive machine, and Amro was a skilled pilot, but Optimus's millions of years of battle experience completely overshadowed Amro's huh. 14. Also, we already know that Optimus was over six times faster and 9,000 times stronger. Oh. Holy hell, who knew Optimus was so freaking <laughs> buff? But the Gundam held plenty of its own advantages. With Amuro's super future sense powers, he could keep up with Optimus's speed. And with the Gundam's firepower, who cares how much it could lift? Unfortunately, the Gundam's limited ammunition meant this couldn't last. And even then, Optimus could certainly survive a shot from the beam rifle. Remember that refinery explosion Optimus yeah. survived? The one you could see from yeah. outer space? This blast left an enormous gash on the planet huh? Cybertron. To measure the power of this explosion, we needed to compare it to the curve yeah. of the planet. Now, Cybertron's size is pretty inconsistent throughout G1 Transformers mm -hmm. history, but even when using the alternating sizes between the cartoon and the comics, the blast is far more destructive than the beam rifle in both yeah. cases. And Optimus just walked right out of that yeah. bitch. And this isn't some weird outlier just out of the comics either. In the cartoon, Megatron survived a blast that pushed Cybertron out of orbit. And he's pretty comparable to Optimus. To be fair, the Gundam boasts some impressive durability feats too. Like when Amuro accidentally blew up a Zaku's nuclear reactor right in his own Crap. face. Hey, give him a break. It was his first time. This explosion created a hole in the space colony which sucked out Amuro's father. Oh. Whoops. On the bright side, he's gonna save some money on Father's Day gifts, right? And with his heightened mind, we deduced the scope of the explosion. It's over 150,000 kilotons of TNT. That's 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima, wow. but still nowhere close to the refinery explosion Optimus survived. Also, the Gundam couldn't dodge Optimus's ion blaster forever. It was fast enough to strike targets in orbit from ground level. That puts its laser speed was over so, so, 3 so, million miles per that hour. Even stop. when he knew it was coming, Amaro couldn't react quick enough to dodge or block just anything blocks. that fast. And even then, Optimus's time in the Omni Globe proves he can think way faster yeah. than Amaro. And just to blow your yeah. mind even more, in order to obliterate Unicron yeah. with the Matrix, the energy output must have equaled more than ahem, 40 Yoda tons what? of TNT. Like the Star Wars game! <laughs> <laughs> and you know what they say, size matters not, especially when Optimus has defeated opponents as big as Damn. Devastator. The Gundam was a powerful mobile suit with some astonishing firepower, but was ultimately outmatched by the Autobot's strength, speed, durability, and experience. I'd say Optimus Man, was prime for this bright. fight. The winner is Optimus see, Prime. music back then had soul in it. Music these days doesn't Thanks have any soul. Guys. If you want to see the exclusive commentary on this episode, just click that little box over there. You can there. disagree with me, the but the 80, yourself, 80s were awesome. You can get off of 80s music was awesome. Look at that. Live action death battle. I wonder who are these boys? Damn, son, damn. No, but in all seriousness, yeah, I have, I have to agree. Th this is awesome. I mean, the, um, oh, the, what? Oh, oh. The, the actual, the actual, move, the actual uh, songs themselves of the, um, the Gundam and all stuff, it is freaking sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <sighs> I mean, I mean, seriously, the, the, the music, you know, you know, in the Gundam thing is fr it's pretty freaking sweet. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking, okay, uh, Optimus Prime has got this one. I mean, seriously, there's a guy inside of it, and Prime is the robot. I mean, he's, he, he, he knows his own body. I mean, 
it's um it's like like me how I, how I move and it, the way he moves and it you know you, 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 you're trying to like pull at the damn thing so yeah that, that's that's about it so um yeah that was a pretty that was that was a pretty good uh, fight there round, round of applause round of applause that was awesome so yeah, that was pretty freaking sweet. So if there's anything you guys want me to react to, just leave it in the comments section below and I will get to the video as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you guys for watching. And if there's a series you want me to check out and review and give my thoughts on it, or if there's a top 10 list you want me to do, or any reactions or responses or rants on anything geeky, just leave links and comments in the comment sections below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And if you guys want to follow me on my social medias, I'm on minds.com, Twitch, Dailymotion and Hatron, Reddit, BitChute, aka the new YouTube, DeviantArt, Discord, Vidme, Gab, Twitter, Tumblr, Patreon, GoFundMe, PayPal, and my other social medias are down there in the description box below, so if you want to go and check them out, please do, and don't forget to subscribe and share this video, and please go and check out my new skeptic channel, Gypsy Freak, it's also down there in the description box below, peace out.